Okay, so ELISA, enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. Assay means test. So why it is called enzyme linked? What is the reason to link the enzyme to do the particular test? That we need to go. That means we need to have some basic knowledge of antigen and uh, antibody. Antigen and antibody. So we know actually what is antigen, what is antibody that we know. But in case, uh, let's take a, a glance look here that we know that foreign body, whatever we entered, microorganism, whatever we entered, the fragment of the microbe, a part of the microbe, we use it to say antigen. Okay. Then again is that particular antigen, whatever we produce from the B lymphocytes, we call it as antibody, isn't it? That will lend in immunology. So there is an antibody and there is an antigen, antigen and antibody, which we can see the both. That whenever this antigen and antibody bind each other, whenever an antigen bind with the antibody, that we said, uh, we have seen in immunology, whenever an antigen and antibody bind each other, that it seems to be sometimes in the form of precipitation, isn't it? Sometimes antigen and antibody is found in the form of precipitation. Okay, so that means the complex antigen and antibody sometimes visible in the form of precipitation. Sometimes when antigen and antibody bind each other, where that is visible in the form of agglutination. The very important thing here you need to remember, you cannot see an antibody even with microscope. You cannot see an antigen, the fragment of the microbe, even in microscope because they are biomolecules. We can't see them. Protein it is antibody, isn't it? We can't see them in even microscope. Okay, but whenever an antigen and antibody bind each other, either you can see in the form of precipitation or agglutination. So what I am saying here, three points. You can't see antigen with naked eye or microscope. You can't see antibody with naked eye or microscope. Then you can see at least antigen and antibody complex either in the form of precipitation. We have syphilis test. Very simple test. If precipitation is formed, then you can understand antigen and antibody complex. And agglutination. We have a simple test, blood group testing. That in, this, in those cases, then the blood group clotting occurs, we recognize the presence of A antigen or B antigen with respect to the test we learned in blood group inheritance. So that means what I'm saying, either antigen and antibody complex in the form of precipitation or agglutination. Okay, then now we are going in the third case. I said two cases that uh, either you can see in the form of precipitation or either you can see in the form of agglutination. Whom the antigen and antibody complex Either you can see in the form of as the precipitation or agglutination. Individually, you can't identify them. I said, when we identify that uh, the antigen and antibody complex, in some formats, they get identified as precipitate. In some formats, we can identify them in the form of agglutination. We are now going for the third case. You cannot see antigen. You cannot see antibody, you cannot see antigen, you cannot see antibody, you cannot see the antigen and antibody complex also. That means in those cases where antigen and antibody complex neither seen in the form of precipitation nor seen in the form of agglutination, that you cannot see antigen, you cannot see antibody and you cannot see that uh, see what I mean, there's a naked eye or microscope, whatever, you cannot see the complex at all. So what we have to do in those cases, that means in case of syphilis antigen, when they bind with syphilis antibody, we found precipitation, we identified easily. In case of A and B blood group antigen, when they form the complex agglutination is identified, we found them easily. But in most cases, you cannot see the antigen and antibody complex either in the form of precipitation or agglutination. Then what to do? What to do? So that for that we have so many techniques like immunofluorescence, electrophoresis, radio immunoassay, enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. That means you need to understand first of all what is exactly ELISA. That ELISA is a test which is identified in those cases where antigen and antibody complexes even is not visible 
that either in the form of precipitation or agglutination. What we are doing with them? We are going to that linked with the engine. That is the first the point to be remembered. We are going to link them. There are so many. We are learning ELISA, immunofluorescence, electrophoresis, radio immunoassay. Then likewise, ELISA is also one of the method in those cases where you cannot see antigen and antibody complexes either in the form of a precipitation or agglutination. So what we have to do with them? We need to find out some more techniques here. Adding enzyme to the antigen or antibody, we have to do some specific tests. Okay, so that is that ELISA. Okay, so be, but to, to go for ELISA, to learn the ELISA, some basics are required, which we are going. So why ELISA? I explain now. Why ELISA? Then what are the requirements for ELISA? Now we are moving with the requirements of ELISA. Okay, so requirements for ELISA. The requirements for ELISA. So what are the requirements? Okay, so then let us uh, write the requirements here. Be careful, focus required to understand this. Number one, a micro titrate plate. A micro titrate plate is required for ELISA. Number two, a purified antibody. Purified antibody is required. A purified antibody. By the time when we use that, we'll understand the individual usage of everything. For why purified antibody? That means laboratory antibody. Purified antibody means laboratory antibody. Why it is required? That is to detect a, a specific antigen. Okay. Then to detect a specific antibody, a purified antigen is required. In laboratory, we are talking about the laboratory requirements. If you want to detect antigen, you want antibody. If you want to detect antibody, you want antigen, a purified antigen. That means in both lab, that uh, uh, antibody, antigen, at a time we are not using actually. In some cases, we are using antibody. For what? To detect antigens of the patient. Okay, a purified antigen we require in laboratory. For what? To detect antibodies in the patient. Okay, got my point? Uh, next, uh, 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 what next here? An enzyme, enzyme, linked immunosorbent assay, isn't it? So that enzyme, which we are using, that to catalyze the production of the color from a chromogenic substance. So why use chromogenic substance? That all will come, that let me say. First of all, the requirements. The enzymes may be, a peroxidase enzyme we use are alkaline phosphate. Alkaline phosphatase is an enzyme. We may use peroxidase or alkaline phosphatase. These are chromogenic substances here. That enzyme, this is going to be crucial. Or you may use a beta galactosidase. So these are the uh, that enzymes we are using here. That uh, when we are using these particular enzymes, that we need to use the proper substrate which that enzyme works on. That means a substrate required, a substrate which react with the enzyme and can change its color. We say chromogenic substance, chromogenic substance, okay. So a substrate, a chromogenic substance which react with the above specified enzyme and uh, which makes a change in the color. So how it is related to the ELISA, that will come. When we go, that will get known. Okay, next, a buffer. A buffer or a washing fluid. That is to uh, remove the particular uh, antibodies uh, which are not binding, which are not participating in the complex formation. A buffer, a buffer solution. That is to remove unbound substances to remove unbound substance. That means those who don't bind with the antigen or antibody, whatever. Complex is not participating in the complexes. So definitely confusing at a time I'm using all these. So that's why uh, that seems to be a little confusing. And finally, that where we should write, okay, you should get in the first uh, on single page, a spectrophotometer. Here the color change is the major characteristic feature here. So to identify the intensity of the color, we need to use a spectrophotometer. A spectrophotometer is required. So these are the requirements here. So we'll get back again for these requirements when we how we are using after that I will show in the end also. 
the requirements for ELISA. So first I said why ELISA? Okay, next that why ELISA? In those cases where antigen and antibody complexes even not seen in the form of either precipitation or agglutination. Okay, so alkaline phosphate we missed. Yes, in my laptop keyboard. Yes, problem is there. So alkaline phosphatase. Okay, so alkaline phosphatase are beta galactosidase. This is major one, peroxidase or alkaline phosphatase or beta galactosidase is an enzyme we use. We use either antibody, a purified or antigen, a purified and a microtype replace and a substrate and a buffer which uh, was to remove the unbound substances and a spectrophotometer is required. Okay, then uh, the, now let us see the types of ELISA. Types of ELISA. Then after we'll get enter into the uh, individual explanation of the ELISA here. Types of ELISA. Okay. So when we talk about the types of ELISA, that there are two types of ELISA are present. Number one, direct ELISA. Number one, direct ELISA. Then number two, indirect ELISA. Direct ELISA and indirect ELISA. So what we do in case of direct ELISA? In case of direct ELISA, that we are going to detect, it is to detect antigens. Okay, so it is used to detect antigens. So that means what you need to carry in laboratory, in lab, we need to carry, in lab, we need to carry antibodies, purified antibodies. Okay, we need purified antibodies in the lab. That we are, when you are searching for patient's antigen, you need to have purified antibodies. Okay. Next, indirect ELISA. It is to detect. It is to detect antibodies. In the patient, we are detecting antibodies. When you are detecting antibodies, definitely what is required in the laboratory, what is required in lab. In lab, we want purified antibodies antigens okay so that's it that means what you are searching in the patient that is important purified antigens okay so we are detecting antibodies so what do you want in laboratory what you need to carry that purified antigen so in the test the very important thing to be noted down here what is from laboratory what is from patient that is very important so what you are doing in direct elisa we are detecting we are trying to detect the antigens of the patient so what you need to carry in laboratory, we need purified antibodies. Okay. So how do we have an antibodies? That means monoclonal antibodies. I said to you, how we get laboratory antibodies, monoclonal antibodies, hybridoma technology. Okay. Let me give a brief of hybridoma technology that how we produce laboratory antibodies, how we produce laboratory antibodies. We'll take a brief, then we'll get into the topic. Okay, so laboratory antibodies, how they get prepared over. So for that, I am going uh, uh, that uh, the procedure, how we get laboratory antibodies producing monoclonal antibodies. So I think, uh, is it the screen visible to you? Okay, now, now we think visible. So I came here to show the laboratory antibodies, the host animal from the mouse, that host is taken here, the mouse. What you are doing, we are injecting antigens into the mouse. We are injecting antigens into the mouse. Okay, so what mouse will do? What mouse will do? That will get immunized, isn't it? That will get immunized. That produce some antibodies. We know epitope and antibody language. Epitopes means antigen. So specific antibodies, again, is that micro antigen we in, introduced into the mouse is getting formed. Okay. Now, that mouse spleen is collected. That means it's a secondary lymphoid organ, isn't it? The mouse spleen, which contain that particular B cells, which are memory cells particularly, which are going to produce the specific antibodies against them, are collected. 
that uh, uh, we are combining with cancer cell. What is the property of a cancer cell? The cancer cell is uh, having a property can divide uncontrollably. What is the property of uh, our memory cell which is produced against a specific antigen can produce specific antibody. So by using polyethylene glycol is uh, added to the mixture that the cancer cell and that our spleen cell is going to be fused each other. We call that cell as hybridoma cell. Unfused B cells will die. Okay, unfused B cells will die. Only hybridoma cells will survive. And uh, uh, that uh, the cancer cells we have to kill, isn't it? Only hybridoma cells we have to separate. For that, we are going to put in a hat medium, hypoxanthin, aminopterin, thymidin, the containing solution. No need to remember all these technical issues here. What we are doing exactly, you need to know. That's what we are doing exactly, we need to know. Okay, so we introduced a specific antigen. Yeah, now we are taking that particular hybridoma cells into the laboratory. And then after we produce a large number of antibodies. That all antibodies are against that specific antigen which we use, isn't it? So we call them as monoclonal antibodies. That's we say monoclonal antibodies. So that means after all injecting a micro antigen to the micro so what we did we produced the specific b memory cells which are having that specific antibodies on their surface and we are collected spleen cell means that is the memory cell okay we are collected a cancer cell okay the cancer cell let me change the color for cancer cell then after we fuse with this particular uh, a cancer cell, uh, which cancer cell is having the property of uncontrolled division. And uh, B cell is having a property of specific antibody production. So we made a hybridoma cell. We made a hybridoma cell, isn't it? The hybridoma cell, which is having the properties of, the property of both un uh, uncontrolled division property as well as the property called uh, the production of antibody that we said hybridoma cell. Okay, so the, for that, for fusage, uh, fusion, we use a fusion called polyethylene glycol. And after that, to separate uh, B cells themselves, uh, uh, the unfused B cells themselves they die. But uh, unfused cancer cells, we have to kill them. We have to kill them by using a HAT solution, a solution which includes hypoxanthin, aminopterin, and thymidin. Okay, whatever, after this, that this particular hybridoma cell is going to produce the large number of antibodies in the laboratory. That antibodies which are produced here are called as monoclonal antibodies. That antibodies which are produced here are said to be as monoclonal antibodies. Okay, that's called monoclonal antibodies. So in this way, we collect the some uh, laboratory uh, antibodies we are going to produce. Whatever the antibody you want, this is the method. We have uh, a, a, a cell that when, that means we have a laboratory animal. So that with the help of that particular laboratory animals, we can produce whatever we want. So that's the speciality of them. Okay, whatever we want, which we are going to produce. So that's it. That's the speciality of uh, this particular monoclonal antibodies a brief is enough here now getting into the back so uh, in both cases uh, that uh, uh, elisa cases to detect the antigen what we want we need purified antibodies isn't it so how we produce the antibodies in hybridoma technology monoclonal antibodies we use it to see that particular antibodies we produce for them okay next direct elisa before i go to the procedure I want to show you an animation and then after we continue with the direct ELISA. Okay, step by step continuation we'll do. So first of all, I'm taking a direct ELISA. Okay, direct ELISA even include two, sandwich ELISA and a competitive ELISA. So I'll show you first, then after we continue with uh, the direct ELISA. In the direct ELISA, we have to learn two, sandwich ELISA and Competitive ELISA. Okay, so let me go to the site. 
that to identify that uh, the, the competitive ELISA, a uh, direct ELISA we have to take. So first of all, let me show you the basic pattern. So first we see the direct ELISA. Here you can see onto the walls of a micro tighter plate. We want our voice to be that you can see the antibodies are there in a elaborate micro titrary plate containing antibodies. Okay, so we have two samples here. So antibodies are attached to the micro titrary plate that you can see here, this red color. So direct Elisa that we are detecting antigen. That's why in laboratory we carried antibodies. So we need to know who is laboratory one and who is uh, uh, the belongs to the uh, patient. So that means in every sample you need to recognize them. So let me say this is laboratory one. Antibodies are attached to the well. This is laboratory one. These three. Okay. Now then next. Let's continue. Let's continue. The patient sample is added. Okay, patient sample is added. In both cases, we added the patient sample. So when we add the patient sample, that antigen will go and bind with the specific antibody. In the other patient serum, you don't find antibodies, antigens, isn't it? So then after, this is a very important task, which is not at all mentioned in the text. That's why people are getting problem here. After all that, you see here, antigen and antibody complex is formed. That means in this patient, that uh, we identified the antigen. Still, till the time we didn't identify what is the action is going on inside that we are seeing. Okay, so here there is no antigen. So that's why there is no complex. So what we are doing afterwards, the free fluid is absorbed. In both cases, we are absorbing free fluid. Now see that. When you absorb the free fluid, that uh, this is the situation. This is patient one and this is patient two. In the patient one, antigen and antibody complex is formed. In the patient too, there is no antigen and antibody complex, but this is not visible for us. That is very important. This is not at all visible for us. As I said to you, that it may be, if it is visible in the form of precipitation or agglutination, there is no problem. Here only we use it to detect, isn't it? But in both cases, the sample microtitary plate will be like that only. Okay, what next we have to do? We are introducing that a new fluid which contain, which contain, which justifies our heading, enzyme linked antibodies. Enzyme linked antibodies. Okay, so an antibody who is linked with the enzyme, in both cases we add it. Into the first microtitary plate, into the second microtitary plate, we add it. Okay. So that yellow point which uh, resembles that uh, enzyme linked antibody. Okay. So enzyme linked antibody is added. Okay. So that means a particular antibody who is coated with an enzyme that is added. Okay. So what happens in first case you see here the positive case that enzyme linked antibody go and bind with the antigen on other side. Okay. In second case that enzyme linked antibody cannot bind with the antigen because there is no antigen, isn't it? There is no antigen. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. So free fluid is absorbed in both cases. Free fluid is absorbed. Now, now what we have to do? We add substrate. The substrate which can bind with which can bind with that particular enzyme. Okay, for example, that we used beta galactosidase. Okay, this enzyme we used here, if it is the beta galactosidase, what can be the substrate? In general, we have to use lactose. Okay, so for your understanding, I am saying. Okay, so when we add substrate lactose, the go and bind with this particular enzyme, that change, the conversion of the lactose into something, means glucose or galactose or both, whatever, that something is appear as color change in the sample one. Okay, so that you can say that is positive. 
and uh, the substrate is uh, entered but nothing to bind here isn't it so that's what you say negative this is the basic elisa this is a basic elisa direct elisa method we use to say it as let me take a glance look on this antibody and microtitri plate and uh, that's a microtitri plate here we add patient sample in both cases, we add patient sample, patient 1 and patient 2. In patient 1, patient 2. We add that sample. Then in first sample, we identify the antigen. Actually, we didn't identify in any sample. Finally, in the change of color only, we'll identify. Okay. So next, if antigen present, they bind to the antibody. Then the free fluid is absorbed in both cases. Free fluid is absorbed. Next. What we need to do in the next enzyme linked antibody need to add that uh, add enzyme linked antibodies antibodies which linked with the enzyme is added so then enzyme linked antibodies which are present here will go We'll go here. It is a positive test to be remembered. We already seen once. That's why you can say you can give directly. NJM linked antibodies are added in both. That what we did. That we have to take uh, this uh, free fluid. When we take the free fluid here, all NJM linked antibodies gone back, isn't it? Because there, there is no antigen. Okay. So then we have to add the substrate in both cases. We added substrate. When we add the substrate, there is a possibility of change of color because the substrate went and bind with the uh, antibody which is coated with enzyme. They bind with that particular enzyme. So that's why we got color change and no color change in the earlier case. That's why what do you say? That is negative. So this is the direct ELISA method. That this, the same direct ELISA method, let us see in, the, in our diagrammatic format. Okay, diagrammatic form. Okay, so uh, let us see here. I, I'll, I'll put the two columns here, positive and uh, negative columns. Positive, the first one, positive, direct ELISA. So here it is the basic ELISA I'm going for, basic ELISA. Because after that we have uh, sandwich ELISA to learn, sandwich ELISA. That uh, they used in our text, the secondary antibodies are also used there. Okay, so that first of all, let me go for the direct ELISA in basic way with the diagrams. So samples we have to take micro titri plate we are taken. So the for theoretical representation is required for all. So little, yeah. So antibody I am putting. Antibodies attached to the micro titri well. Next, uh, what we need to do here, we need to add antibodies. I'm taking only three, but in thousands and lakhs we'll take. Uh, then first sample. So let me write the theory also for this. That will be better for us. Then you can take the screenshot. You just consider it as a notes and you write notes afterwards. Okay. So let me write the theory for this. First, uh, micro titri plate. What you can see here? Antibodies. Antibodies are attached to the micro titri plate. So that means they are from our laboratory. Antibodies attached from the micro titri plate. Next, the second one we have to add here. The second one, patient sample is added. Let me add the patient sample. Patient sample is, is added. Okay, patient sample is added. That I am adding the patient sample. Blood sample or something else we add. Patient sample is added. So the patient sample which contain antigens. So let me show you that these are the antigens. Okay, so if if antigen is there, they go and bind with the particular antibody. If antigen is there, they go and bind with the antibody. That we have to write. Because we didn't see that, that's why. So patient sample is added. If antigen, 
is present in patient sample if antigen is present in patient sample they bind with antibody laboratory antibody that is we call it as primary antibody so after that when you get secondary antibody we will differentiate but till the time we are using only primary antibody okay next what next so now what you can see here in uh, of that after that you just see this arrow mark indicates that in every uh, step arrow mark indicates that the free fluid is absorbed okay so when we absorb the free fluid that particular all will go who will go free antigens if present they'll go okay so now what you can see you can see antibody and antigen complex what we are doing for this sample what we are doing we are adding enzyme linked antibodies we are adding enzyme linked antibodies so what i'll take for this shall we take the black color no green we have to take so enzyme linked antibodies are added and they go and bind with the antigen on other side okay they go and bind with the antigen on other side so for this actually there is a basic requirement that antigen should have uh that uh, two antibody binding site at least that antigen should have own two antibody binding site otherwise we can't do this kind of this experiment we call such kind of antibodies antigens as multivalent antigens so that means sometimes some uh, microbes are having only uh, one binding site so what we have to do with them we'll see next but this is the case that uh, antigen is having binding sites on two sides okay so the green one what is that green one the green one is enzyme linked antibody the green one is enzyme linked antibody so i added enzyme linked antibody so this is very important so that is very important that i am writing here enzyme linked antibody okay what next what next i have to draw all this again so my limitations i have that means uh, i am not using pen or paper or blackboard i am using on screen so that's why you may not get a beautiful diagrams but i hope you will do this afterwards take a screenshot and do the diagram again okay so this is a scenario we are seeing that we have three here one is antibody who attached to the micro titri plate an antigen which bind with the antibody and uh, that particular enzyme linked antibody what we have to do now we need to add substrate we need to add the substrate so add substrate so when we add the substrate substrate means which can bind with that antibody so that for your understanding i am saying if you say protein is a substrate enzyme will be trypsin if we say amylase is a substrate that amylase is the enzyme carbohydrate will be the substrate so here what we are using that we have to take door peroxidase or beta galactosidase we are taking here when we add that means a green coating is that nothing but enzyme on a both antibody okay so this may be the antibody on that particular antibody what we did here we just coated with enzyme okay so antibody coated with enzyme now we have added the substrate what it makes it makes the change in the color so color is change the total color is change if the color is change what we can understand that if color is change what we can understand if color is change that we can understand that the particular scenario the color is changed means uh, that there is an antibody there is an antibody and there is an antigen and uh, that particular uh, enzyme linked antibody the complex is present okay the complex is present so let me show you color is changed okay the color changed means we identify 
the three issues. One is enzyme linked antibody is attached to the antigen and we detected the presence of antigen. So all this because of for what? To detect this black spot that is a antigen. We detected antigen in the patient. So that's why I am declaring this test result positive. If the color change, test result is positive. I am writing on top of this in laboratory by observing is I am identifying test result is positive. Okay, so I got a small spell mistake. Test result is positive. Okay, so that's it. This is a, a scenario. Test result, I got positive. So, uh, okay, very good. Test result positive we got. Then what about uh, the negative test? That means uh, if we do the negative test, that you can understand at least, isn't it? So that's why same experiment, if negative, how will it come? That we have to check it out. In direct ELISA, let us try to do the negative test. So I allow you to take the screenshot of this total picture. Then it will be helpful for you to understand and after that to draw the diagram. Okay, so let me write the theory also. First one we wrote, second one we wrote the theory. Enzyme linked. Now I have to write the theory. Enzyme linked antibodies are added. Enzyme linked antibodies are added. It's a little increase of the font size. Okay, enzyme linked antibodies are added. So what we have to write for this? Add substrate. Okay, add substrate. So going to be a little mess up. Yeah, add substrate, then color is change. Okay, add substrate, then color is change. Okay, next, negative. Negative test. Let us do the negative test in the same direct ELISA, that negative test. So how it can be seen over? Negative test. Direct ELISA, negative test. Okay. So first of all, who declares what is the negative? So that's why let me go with, I'm not announcing it as negative directly. So I'm taking the micro titrate plates as usual, the micro titrate plates. Okay, so then after what we have to do, we need to add antibody, antibody on the micro titrate well, strongly attached. Okay, so what we have to do for the sake, the first sample uh, to be added over is that uh, the patient sample is added patient sample is added that is added is patient sample when we add the patient sample okay so when we add the patient sample wait wait so we want a, there is no maybe there is no antigen here so that's why they don't bind that we don't we don't say that we can't say that that uh, no antigen we can't declare like that okay next what we have to add we need to add enzyme linked antibodies. Enzyme linked antibodies are added. Okay, so let me show you enzyme linked antibodies. If there is no antigen, they can't bind on the antigen, isn't it? So next, aromox, putting aromox. What it means? Every time we are removing the free fluids. Okay, next. What next? Oh, okay, okay. Little increase in the font. Same font we have to maintain. Okay. So now add substrate. There is no change in the color. Why? Because there is no antigen. Why? Because uh, there is no enzyme linked antibody. Why? No enzyme linked antibody. Because that was absorbed by uh, that uh, free fluid is absorbed. There is no antigen. They can't bind. Okay. So let me start from here. So antibodies attached to the Antibody, the first one, antibodies attached to the micro titri plate. Yes, antibodies attached to the micro titri plate. Yes, uh, is it enough? No, should go here. Yeah, antibodies attached to the micro titri plate. The second one, what we have to do, patient sample is added. Patient sample is added. Okay, so if antigen present, they bind with, they bind with, if antigen present, they bind with 
antibody if if i am saying if not if not no binding okay so that uh, the next thought enzyme linked enzyme linked antibodies are added antibodies are added if antigen present if antigen present they bind with antigen on other side they bind with antigen on other side okay if antigen present they bind with antigen on other side okay next so this is very important i am writing on the top add substrate if no change in the color if change in the color we confirmed already so now i am giving result there is no change in the color there is no change in the color what i observed is no change in the color if there is no change in the color so no anti no enzyme linked antibody which is a free fluid is absorbed that at the time it gone no enzyme linked antibody which means no antigen is traced okay contrast we are saying here based on the number of antigens present in the sample color changes will come over the high concentration of the color what you can understand more antigens are present that is too dangerous low concentration less antigen no color at all so what do you say a is okay so how do we detect the color just remember spectrophotometer okay so in the case in this particular case whatever i used here they are all as the primary uh, antibodies now i have to introduce secondary antibody which is given in direct elisa method in our textbook for uh, that uh, univalent uh, uh, one uh, that what we do with the univalent antigens that we have to discuss so that uh, whatever the basic elisa i explained here so with positive test test result is positive so what if there is no change in the color what i can declare test result is negative the test result is negative so technically go technically because when in when i go to competitive elisa uh, that uh, uh, positive and negative will be decided by color change itself but there in the case that is reverse so that's why don't see the last box color change is not the complete idea so that you have to detect positive and negative so final uh, uh, in these two cases i'll draw the two boxes here that you can understand well that in case of positive what is present in case of negative what will be seen over so so for that first of all let me change the black black color okay so that antibodies are taken then antibodies bind with the antigen and uh, we used a, uh, a particular uh, uh, enzyme linked antibody i am using green color for enzyme linked enzyme linked antibody so this is the positive case there when i add substrate color change can be seen over so what do you say positive okay in case of negative condition so what we can notice over in case of negative condition negative cases antibody is there when the the patient sample when it is added if there is no antigen no binding then uh, if uh, when after that when enzyme linked antibodies are even added they can't bind with uh, because the with antibody directly so that's why uh, that you will find the free case no change in the color negative we can say this is a test the basic elisa test we are talking about till the time we just talked about the basic elisa test so i hope you have taken the screenshots that uh, for both positive as well as negative along with the notes take a screenshot of basic elisa positive basic elisa negative okay then this is negative one let me go for the positive yeah this is a positive one The enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, or ELISA, is an extremely sensitive test that is used to detect antibodies or specific antigens. 
The direct ELISA is a test for the presence of antigen. In this procedure, a known antibody is adsorbed to the inside of the well in a microtiger plate. After rinsing to remove excess antibody, the sample suspected of containing the antigen is added. Next, an enzyme-linked antibody that can react with the antigen is added. If antigen is present in the well, the enzyme-linked antibody binds to it and is retained. The colorless substrate for the enzyme is then added. Development of color indicates the presence of the antigen. In the indirect ELISA, antigen is added to the microtiter plate well, and the antigen attaches to the walls of the microtiter plate. Okay. So that's about the direct ELISA. In case of direct ELISA, uh, that we can see antibodies we attach to the microtiter plate. So that anti antigens enzyme linked in the in different animations will be seen in different formats, isn't it? Okay, so that you need to understand this first of all. Then after we'll be that we have so many other methods like uh, sandwich ELISA, like competitive ELISA in that cases. So that is understanding this is very important here. So what you see that antibodies are added first, that antibodies with their FCNs attached to the microtitry plate. Rinsing, that means free fluid is absorbed. Now antigens are added here. Antigen, the green one is antigen, which they go and bind with the antigen and antibody complex is formed. Okay. Then after enzyme linked antibodies are added. Enzyme linked antibodies are added. Okay, so let us stop here. That to understand. So all the participants are available here. Okay, so the violet one, what is this? Antibody. This is antibody. So whom it belongs to? This is belongs to the laboratory. We prepared monoclonal antibody. The technology identified, I said over. Okay, the green one, what is this? This is antigen. So from where we obtain this? Patient sample it is. From the patient. Okay, patient sample. Okay, next. So you see here that enzyme linked antibody it is the third one, this one. Okay, enzyme linked antibody. Okay. So that enzyme linked antibody is uh, from from where it is, it is also lab. It is also from laboratory. So what is this? A colorless substrate, a substrate which bind with enzyme, and after that, that makes a change in the color. Okay, that makes a change in so that if you understand that pattern that will be enough that will be enough for us okay so that means i'll i'll do one thing here uh, that single diagram that single diagram is enough for us to make it out okay so this area that if you understand this particular diagram that will be enough for us that will be enough That's it. Take the screenshot and uh, try to identify this issue when doubt comes. Okay. So we have the participants here. We have the participants. What are they? This one. Number one. Number two. Number three. And number four. These are the major participants. Number one. What is number one? It is antibody. Isn't it? That is antibody. Antibody of laboratory number two antigen from the patient sample number three enzyme linked antibody number four that substrate which binds with this and enzyme linked enzyme of uh, antibody of enzyme and that makes the change in color this is positive test okay in negative test if you don't see this antigen they even can't bind okay so that's why you don't find any change in the color so that is a basic elisa okay so more we have to discuss about the ELISA that we'll discuss in the next class about uh, the ELISA, the various methods like uh, direct ELISA includes sandwich ELISA and competitive ELISA and uh, indirect ELISA, how do we with antigen testing that we have to say. Okay, so that we'll discuss in the next class. How the pregnancy test will be done. ELISA means immediately with the, uh, that uh, what will come into the mind of people that uh, AIDS test, no. The competitive ELISA is done for pregnancy test, which is very, very famous and very regular test actually. 
the competitive ELISA, which will be performed for pregnancy confirmation, whether pregnancy is there or not. Very simple technique that uh, you understand, when you understand the mechanism, everything will be simple here. That we'll discuss ELISA in the next day.